Hi, this is George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. And this video series is a review for my Math 21 Intro to Statistics class for their midterm. We are using the Sullivan Woodbury Interactive Statistics textbook, and we are covering chapters one through seven on this midterm review. In this example, we'll take a look at how to use a frequency distribution to create a histogram, a relative frequency distribution, and finally discuss the shape of a distribution. Here's a frequency distribution showing the ages of 66 people at a baseball game. Construct a histogram to represent this data. We can begin with a vertical axis that goes to a height of 25 because that was our greatest frequency. Then we can place our class limits on the horizontal axis, starting with 25, 35, and so on, until we reach the last one, which was 85. And now we're going to draw bars to the appropriate height. The first class, 25 up to 35, not including 35, had a height of 25. So we draw a bar up to 25 like so. The next bar should go to a height of 14, then 11, 10, 4, and 2. When I do these by hand, I like to write the count above the bar. I think it makes it easier for the reader to read this. Okay, let's go ahead and See how we could construct this using StackCrunch. I've typed the categories into the third column, labeled eight categories, and the counts into the fourth column, labeled eight counts. We'll begin by making this bar plot. Press graph, bar plot, summary. The categories are in eight categories, and the counts are in eight counts. I'm going to display the value above the bar, and press compute. Here is a bar plot that we can use to create our histogram. Here is the results from the bar graph, but we want to make it look like a histogram. The first problem is that the bars don't touch, and the second is that we're not working with a numerical scale on the base of the graph. So if we were to try to edit our graph, we would start with 25 here, 35, and so on, 65, 75, and one more way out here at 85. Then we need to make sure that the bars go to where they touch. So this would all be shaded for the first bar. The second bar should go and touch that, and so on. And so that's how we can start with a bar graph and transform it into a histogram. Like so. Part B, create a relative frequency distribution. We could do this by hand first by noticing that the total of the frequencies n is 66. And then we want to divide each frequency by 66. 25 divided by 66 is 0.379, so I can list the relative frequencies right next to it. 14 divided by 66 rounds to be 0.212. 11 divided by 66, 0.167. 10 divided by 66, 0.152. 4 divided by 66, 0 0.061, and 2 divided by 66, 0 0.030. We could also have used StatCrunch and the bar graph to come up with these relative frequencies. Let's take a look at how that's done. Now, if I edit this bar plot, I can see the relative frequencies for each category. Press Options, Edit change the type from frequency to relative frequency, and press Compute. 
Let me make that a little bit larger. Now we can see the relative frequencies above each bar. Also notice that if you mouse over the bar, the relative frequency will show up there as well. So once again, the relative frequencies are listed atop the bars. One part to go. Describe the shape of the distribution. We notice that most of the values are on the left side of the distribution and is being stretched to the right. So we say that this is skewed right. I hope you find this video helpful. If you need to reach out to me, you can reach me through the contact page on my website, which is georgewoodbury.com. You can also get a copy of the midterm review off of my homepage. Click on the link that says materials for my statistics students. You can also reach out to me on Twitter at George Woodbury.